So we're going to talk about electromyography, or EMG. Uh, this concept started 18th century with Galvani, um, and it was determined that muscles can develop tension or force when electrically stimulated, so TENS units, similar to that, or uh, when muscles produce, uh, they do produce a detectable current or voltage when they're developing force. So both ways, you can stimulate a muscle and, and you'll see it, it um, develop force or as it's developing force, it's producing a, a voltage. So let's discuss some uses of EMG or electromyography. Uh, it can be used to study neuromuscular function, so the relationship between your neural system and the muscular system. Uh, it's used to identify which muscles develop force throughout a movement. So if you're trying to optimize, say, a baseball pitch, you can set up a whole EMG setup and figure out which muscles fire when for the most for professionals versus um, people learning to pitch, etc. So it could help in coaching, in rehab. Which activities elicit more or less muscle activity? Sometimes you'll read about the latest and greatest ab workout based on EMG, right? If it has more muscle activation, it's a better workout. Not always, right? Because you have to think of an injury, but these are just a few functions that we use EMG for within kinesiology. All right, finally, I just wanna talk about one concept within EMG. Uh, so we have a neural signal, right? So the neural signal is coming from our central nervous system, spread out across our muscles, uh, and then all of a sudden there is an increase in force production. So there is a delay between that neural signal when it starts and when the force production begins to increase and we call that the electromechanical delay so if you hear that or read that if you're going to dive into some EMG studies or studies that use EMG I just want you to be aware that the relationship between the neural system and the muscular system there is something called electromechanical delay